on from 5 Admets from 5 chapter 4 Vectors In this chapter it's very similar to what they have learned in physics Vectors Before you get started off you need to understand between the scalar quantity and the vector quantities the vectors there are two so one is a scalar scalar quantity it comprises of scalar quantity and the vector itself vector quantity so what's the difference for a scalar quantity for scalar when they say whenever they say it's a scalar it is just merely only the magnitude only the value only the numbers what does it mean by that it means the magnitude by itself without knowing the direction without knowing without the direction give you an example what does it mean by magnitude I mean by scalar says I have 3 cm 3 cm is just a length you have no idea where it's uh, the direction where it goes to the left to the right goes up go down it doesn't know you just know it's 3 cm the length it means length you have no idea which direction is heading this is what it meant or maybe 6 seconds you have no idea this is time you have no idea you have no idea where it's going left right up and down because it's just time didn't tell uh, um, the, doesn't know the direction you have maybe uh, 8 hertz this is a frequency well, I can't go down the list, otherwise it would be in physics. It's Admets, scalar, just magnitude. The keyword would be a magnitude. Magnitude would be just the numbers without knowing the direction. You'll find scalar in vectors. Let me go into what we have vector, but this vector quantity. For vector quantity, it is all about, it's a combination of number as well as direction and okay number and direction how are we going to um, make you understand what is it now say for example very common example that we learned from four so I'm gonna bring it up here a Cartesian plane is one good example or a coordinate of a number a coordinate of a place is a very good example to explain vector says the horizontal origin to the right this is x direction which means this is a positive x direction to the right is positive x go up would be my positive y positive number now if I were to have a coordinate here says um, a where my coordinate of a is says um, maybe it's 12 unit in the past year, one of the past year question, twelve unit to the right, meaning here the coordinate of x here is twelve, and uh, go up by five, maybe. So you learn in, in a lower form last time. You know that oh, this the coordinate for a is easily twelve five. You know that, but in order to express them in uh, vector form you can tell that A is basically from origin go up to here is going towards this direction from here to here making an angle of theta from the horizon 
So they are going to have number and direction. How are you going to represent this? The vector is from O to A, so therefore the vector represents OA, capital, with an arrow. It means start from O to A. From O to A. That's why the arrow from left to right, this is direction, OA. So therefore, the vector is 12 unit to the right. So I would say it's 12 unit to the right. Well, you bear with me for now, this is where the direction of x. Positive 12 unit to the right of x and then goes up. Positive 5 unit. So I plus 5 unit over the y direction. Okay, so this is how it represents a vector. Well, I will go through more on how the operator you can sum a vector, subtract a vector to see if the vector is collinear or parallel or non-parallel in the following slides. But up to here, I want to let you know that vector will have a number. Let me highlight them. I have number. We have a number. This is a number, this is a number, and a direction would be here. This is what we have in the direction. I'm not sure you can see this color. Maybe we'll put it darker. So this is the direction. 12 unit is a magnitude. 12 unit to the right. Right represents by x. Positive is go up. 5 unit over the y axis. So this is what it means by vector. So this is a vector notation. There are several methods to represent a vector. Some books, like this is a very common, this is a very common method. Or some books, they would have A with a string down there. A similar symbol to, I mean, you have a keyboard, the one next to one is a string. Or some books it would have their bow it, make it dark thicker. They purposely bow it a. Or it's possible to have p bow q vector from p to q. It means by that they bow it. Okay. So I hope you are clear. What does it mean by vector? Vector is a uh, number and direction. So this is what you have from O to A. A coordinate, 12, 2 is a good a way to uh, notify. A vector is 12, you need to X, 5 unit goes up to the Y. Now just like I mentioned, you have an angle as well. That is what I'm going to show you next. That would be, how are you going to express them? into a meaningful term by the previous example in order to express OA OA a vector OA is a bow OA from O to A you may express it in vertical form as well, 12, 5. It helps when you want to perform any operation, plus, minus, times and divide. You put it this way, you may uh, you may do it in your working, or some question they will uh, ask you to uh, express it in XY form. This is uh, similar to XY form. Over here, you may have to find out what's the magnitude. Oops. In order to find out the magnitude of OA, or in another form, a simple form will be a modulus. OA, it means magnitude. You have a two parallel line in between the vector, it means magnitude. Then, how you do that 
that will be tear particulates. You have 12 unit across. You have 5 unit over here. This is definitely perpendicular. So what's the length here? So obviously it will be particles theorem and that would be square root of 12 squared plus 5 squared unit. So therefore would be 144 plus 25 root of it unit that would be 1 six nine unit which correspond to thirteen <coughs> excuse me this is not something new just that you need to make you uh, you need to understand the symbol magnitude is modulus two parallel line all you need is particle theorem it means find out the length then next they ask to find the theta theta is rather simple because it's opposite or adjacent over side, sorry, it is over adjacent, there will be a tangent. So here, tangent theta is 5 over 12. I think you have learned in form 4, tangent or even lower form, form 3, sine cos tangent, how do you get them? It's opposite over adjacent. So therefore, angle theta, that would be your calculator, 5, 12, or you have your log book. Then make sure the mode is in degree form but not radian and you will get an answer very close to about very close to about 22.6 degree so therefore the magnitude of OA would be 13 unit positive and 22.6 uh, degree from the x-axis so go up angle by 22.6 degree so this is how you basically work out its magnitude of a vector vector and uh, magnitude of it and also the angle So next, what I'm going to show you would be some definition. So some terminologies, some wording, maybe for check please. Now, if you have a vector with zero, with zero magnitude say it's uh, OB now is zero X plus two Y so this is what it means by zero vector so it has no direction over the x-axis so that would be overall Y maybe here up Another color, perhaps. Here's two. O, B. This is your X. Okay. Zero vector or zero vector. That would be denoted as zero. This is what you remember, zero vector. Then you have two vectors. Two vectors are equal. How do you define them with equal when they have two or they have same meaning the the y and x magnitude is the same. You have same magnitude and also the same direction okay
Now, next that would be a parallel vector. Parallel vector is something useful. Sometimes it's also called collinear. Parallel vector is when a vector where the gradient are the same. So here is a vector, and another one is another vector. Obviously, the length here is larger than this one. So one would expect if it were to be a here, and therefore if they are parallel. If they are parallel, therefore you will expect B vector. This would be K B. K is a constant. I'll give an example. If A vector A is uh, two one, B is four two. So. If they are collinear or they are parallel, therefore A will be equals to K times B, where your K would easily be half. Let me work it out over here. If two one will be equals to K times four two. Two is what times four, so this is half. Therefore. K is basically half. This is how you work it out. Parallel vector. But of course, the A and B, given A and B, they are not zero vector. It cannot be zero, otherwise it doesn't work. Next, what happened? They are. Not parallel. So definition which A equals to K B. If they are not parallel, if A is not parallel, uh, not parallel, I mean not parallel to B. If they are not parallel, so therefore which must be equals to K. And they must be equal to zero. This is one definition that you should uh, know. Give an example. Given that A and B, A and B, they are not parallel. So therefore, if I have two minus m times A is equal to n plus three b, this is uh, middle of some calculation. If they are not parallel, therefore, two minus m must be equal to zero n plus 3 must be equal to 0. Then from there, you're able to find out your m is equal to 2, n is equal to negative 3. This is for the case of non-parallel. Now next, after all the definition over here, I think we get to uh, do some real deal. They call resultant vector. Now, now resultant vector. It will be. <coughs> that I mean by. <coughs> Either triangular law or the parallelogram law. Oops, parallelogram. Or the uh, L L parallelogram law. Try.
triangular law that would looks like I think you have heard of this by uh, if you have heard of it this is my positive y positive x and uh, zero triangular law would be the head and toe says you have a vector head and tail your one vector goes up to here maybe a and then you connect another vector maybe the vector b is up here so you are connecting here I mean at the edge here you connect of another vector you connect them together you connect them then the resultant vector would therefore be from O walk up to here Oops. I mean it's not a straight line ah I couldn't do a straight line So it's a knowledge you walk from here up to here. Okay, this is a resultant vector. Okay, so this is what it means by a triangular law. It doesn't need to worry much about it because uh, you should know how to do it as time goes. Triangular law is you construct a triangle, connect the head to tail, that's it. So if you want the 1.0 to here, in order to walk from here to here, it's basically here to here, and then here to here. This is triangular law. Parallelogram law, however, that would be, says, if you have this, same Cartesian, I mean, so that you're able to compare method, depends on instance, sometimes you use this, sometimes in other ways go with better. So you will give it a one coordinate or maybe a one vector, O, A, this is A, and then there's another vector, this is vector B. Parallelogram is you draw a parallelogram, so you extend it or you copy the one A over here, parallel, so go up here, this is my A, parallel, and then my B, which is a uh, different color, this is my B, says the one similar to here, parallel to this one here. And then the resultant would be you connect adjacent from here to here. So this is what it means by the resultant vector. Two methods. Or sometimes you have this polygon law. Either way, you can do it. Okay. For some practice purpose, it is on how do you walk walk from here to here. It's from here to here, and then here to here. Its resultant is from zero, O origin to here. Now, let's get into some practice exercise now if I you were given if you were given two vector vector A and B where if from here to here is my vector A this is point A this is point B and then a triangular polygon and then here is B this is my C so if you have a triangle here what is the resultant vector from B to C so based on the diagram here my A, if 
want to walk from B to A, travel from B to A, the vector is A. Whereas, if you walk from C to A, vector is B. So if you were to ask, you were asked to find for B to C, aha, uh -huh, that will be some challenges. How do you get them? Now, there's a method. In order to B to C, I'll do more on it, but here, what we have in common is A, in common. Something in between. So you can write example, I mean, not the way to method, always in between, they have common is A. So B, A, it could be B, A, plus A, C. Therefore, the union, the middle, would be cancel off later. I mean, this is what you have in cancel off data. This is a method to get them, to get B, C, B, A, plus A, C. So these two will be cancel off in later. You just need to know is it this it works like this. Uh, I will show you more later. Huh? So B C is B A A C. How do I know A? Because they have A in common over this diagram. So to do that, that will therefore be equals to B A is A. A C, however, A C plus U plus A C is different than from C A because it switch places so therefore you include a negative C A the answer would therefore A minus B okay switch places Another analogy, maybe another example. If I have A, I have B, I have C. B to C is defined as C. B to A, this is giving the question, defined as B. Uh, C to A is defined as vector A. Now, so, will you be able to find out what's vector C? From here, if you want to walk from B to A, in order to walk from B to A, what you can do is B to A. So, it's vector of C is what? You're going to find out B to C. So, therefore, it's looking for B, C. So, B, C, obviously, is B to A. B to A. B to A, then A to C, then plus A to C. See? A and A will cancel off later. So B to A, A to C. So therefore, vector C will be equal to B to A, B to A is defined B plus A C. A C, so the direction is opposite then from what is given. I mean, I will highlight over to you, let you see. C A is this direction, but you want for A C, so it's opposite then from what is given. So therefore, that will be a negative sign. Oops, sorry, A. Okay. I hope you're clear by now. The direction, if it's opposite then from what is given, all you need to do, you add a negative sign. Finally, towards the end, I mean two more parts, we have expressing vector in Cartesian plane, which I have uh, explained it earlier. So, 
for vector incantation plane, you may express in x number i is the x direction plus y j y direction or vertical form. Okay, what is i? i is the uh, unit vector. I mean. You need to find out what's the unit vector later. Unit vector in the positive x j will be the unit vector over in the positive y direction. Okay. We'll go to the next page. What is unit vector? Unit vector any sign, but it will have a cap. This is a cap and also a string. So there are two things, a cap and a string. So unit vector R cap and a string is equal to the vector itself over the magnitude of the vector. You always forget this. Unit vector is vector only over unit vector. Now let's go back to our initial vector so that for consistency consistency purpose. During the beginning, at the beginning, I have a vector of 12, 5. Okay, I work out what is the magnitude and unit. So I'm going to use the same question, 12.5, to find its unit vector. So for the question, if I have a vector, it's a 12 unit over the x plus 5j I think uh, an extra symbol okay in order to look for its magnitude or oh, sorry vector unit vector therefore there will be the vector is 12i plus 5j over the magnitude of r would be just now we're finding out it's already 13. It's 13. Or, I think I work out the uh, working here so that uh, you won't get confused. Square root of 12 squared plus 5 squared. I've shown this working earlier. So it's 12 over 13 i plus 5 over 13. J, you can do that because they are on different. They are at a different uh, location. I'm um, different x and y plane. You will just divide as a denominator. So this is what you how you get unit vector for a vector. Now, next would be the addition and subtraction. addition and uh, subtraction adding a vector subject and uh, it's rather simple because say if you're given a vector a is a uh, 5i plus a uh, ah no chuck uh, maybe it's a big number use a small number 2j unit b uh, vector b is a uh, 3i plus a uh, minus 4j, so we have a negative direction. So, in questions are oh, the sum of a and b, what is it? There are two ways of doing. One way will be the always the vertical way, 5, 2 plus 3 minus 4, that would be 8 minus 2. 
and you need to express them into horizontal form in vector proper form minus 2j this is the final answer subtraction you just add in a negative it works so if a subtract b therefore it would be 5 2 minus 3 minus 4 therefore that would be 2 6 the answer would be final answer you need to express it in this form plus 6 j real deal to solve a uh, SPM style question. I think the last part here is rather important. The coordinate system. Now, again, we have Cartesian plane. This is a positive x direction. This is the origin O. Going up is my positive y direction. Things would be interesting here because um, first of all, they will normally give you two coordinate they let you know coordinate of oh okay I have a P point point of P is says um, H and K any point any number and then uh, maybe another point Q is coordinate is uh, S and T any number here I just use symbol but in reality is just a number So from the coordinate itself, from the coordinate itself, H and K is reference to origin. So therefore, by using the coordinate itself, you know that this is a vector O P. And the coordinate for Q, this is O Q. So you may derive from there O P by giving by given the coordinate is OP is therefore equals to H I plus K J whereas OQ that would be S I plus T J okay now <clears throat> now if you are asked to look for what is PQ So, what's PQ? There are two ways. Either you walk the circuit or you do by definition. So, there are two ways of doing. So, PQ, walk circuit, PQ, walk this uh, car, I mean graph. You want to walk from P to Q, you either walk from P to origin, then from origin to Q. So therefore, there will be PO plus OQ. Okay. The problem is, I don't have PO, I only have OP. So therefore, that will be OP, PQ, so it's negative OP. Negative OP is PQ, PO, sorry. Plus OQ is a coordinate, OQ. So uh, what you do next is uh, put it into a vertical form. So it's negative. OP is HK. HK plus OQ is ST. So therefore, the answer would therefore be um, put a positive in front. So it's S minus H over the I and then plus T minus K over the J coordinate. Okay. The essence, what's important, is over here. Connection. I mean, how do they connect it? I mean, PO is negative OP. And uh, <coughs> 
the coordinate here is given coordinate given is actually OP then the rest is all about maths Now that's all for this chapter. You may want to go through past your questions <coughs> to uh, enhance your skill in a vector. This chapter is rather not too hard. Um, I hope you like this theory. The concept wise, uh, you need to practice again. You need to practice about 20 questions, 20 questions to 30 questions. For this vector, maybe you can try 20, 25 questions plus five questions from past year. You will be able to excel it. With, with that, um, stay tuned to my next YouTube channel. I wish you good luck trying those questions. It's not hard at all. Past the question especially, they are working behind. If you have a problem working through it, maybe you need to refer those uh, working. It helps you to understand this chapter even better. You will find that they are all consistent with uh, the theory they have shown you in the previous few pages over here. Practice makes perfect. 25, 20, 25 questions per chapter is my advice to you in a week time. With that, thank you.